We're bringing the world's finest entertainment to Germany. With the very first tournament, we managed to sell out the iconic Festhal and break the German MMA records. And now, it's time to move on. This time, you can look forward to German superstar and former pro footballer Christian Eckelin. Oh! The left hand's dropped him! For the second time this year, he is going to face the dangerous Brazilian striker, Di Oliveira. A rematch that will settle all scores and give both fighters the chance to show who is better. Will once again perform in front of his home crowd. Now, as the winner of the battle for Germany. In front of all Frankfurt, the Czech crowd favourite, Milos Petrasek, will try and rob him of the victory. Petrasek takes him down immediately. How will the battle between the best German fighter and multiple time world champion against the elite Czech fighter turn out? Milos Petrasek! The story and the mission continue. Octagon 36, October 15th, Frankfurt. Tickets available for purchase through Ticketmaster DE. Na karte Octagon 35 nás čaká iba jedna postojárska bitva podľa pravidel Undergroundu. A v ňom sa proti sobie potkají dva fantastiční moraváci, domáci Brňák Radek, Ruchy Roušal, ktorý přivítá v kleci Marka Partla. Marek Partl konečne po dlhé dobe bude môcť využiť všetky techniky postojárskych disciplín. Teda to, kde je doma, kde sa cíti vo svojom živle. Partl si zaspomíná na svoje úspešné roky kickboxera, kdy zářil na domácí scéne a každý jeho zápas byl vždy veľmi atraktívny. Avšak proti nemu bude stáť ruchy roušal. Obávali strajker. Atvorná zadní roušal. Krásne aj tých přes obie ruce. Ten má na svém konte 26 profesionálnych zápasů. 20 dokázal vyhrát a to 21. vítězství mu přineslo první veľký titul organizace DFN, ktorá je na české a slovenské púde tou nejlepší postovářskou organizací u nás. Konečne je tu zápas, kedy si to Roušal a Bartl rozdajú v postojárských disciplínach. O pozor, dobrý zvedák, tam je o Bartl. Teraz sa zrazia títo dvaja kohúti uprostred oktagónu a uvidíme, čo sa bude ďať. So here we go. Set and ready for one of the most anticipated fights on this card. And that is saying a lot when you look at the card we've had and the, ca the card we've got in front of us. Marek Bartal stepping in here to take on the hometown. Bruno fighter Radak Rochelle. But look how popular this guy is. And he's earned that in Octagon because let's look at his history with the promotion. He made history with the promotion being the first guy ever, ever to step in an Octagon cage for the first fight at Season 1 Octagon Challenge way, way back 2016. Since then, he has had a career which has seen him have some highs and lows. 22, 21 mixed martial arts fights. A record of 10 and 11, but always brings it alongside that again, which makes this fight even more intriguing. He has had a storied career in striking arts as well. Over 120 matches in boxing, Thai boxing, kickboxing. And this is for me why when and they told me they were matching these guys up. I didn't know initially it was mixed martial arts. But then when I got the, the fight sheet, the fight card, which had the words underground rules on it, it sent this fight up tenfold in my excitement fear. Yeah, it, it made total sense, right? When they said it's going to be underground. Oh, okay, perfect, I get it now. This fight, these two guys, dangerous, explosive strikers, and they always bring attitude. We saw it at the weigh-ins. We saw what this fight means to these two. 
we saw them go back and forth. And I can't, like, I, know I don't want to give a commentary's curse. I can't see this being a boring fight. It's physically impossible. <laughs> yeah, uh, and when you look at also everything that's riding on it, and the person who puts stuff on it is Radat Rochelle, because both are from the Czech Republic. Bartel now bases himself over in Bratislava, Slovakia. And Rochelle has almost called him a traitor to his country. He's almost said, in this stage, in my hometown, on Czech soil, I am going to punish you. I am going to claim the flag as the most dangerous striker in the Czech Republic. And here he comes, Radek Ruchi Rasha, Rushal, one of the most polarizing characters in combat sports in this part of the world, but somebody who absolutely delivers every time he steps in a ring, in a cage, every time he steps on a stage for a face-off. He is in fight mode 100% of the time. You look at his record, Luke, 27 Muay Thai matches, 20 victories. His recent run of form under the Dracula Fight Night promotion, which is fighting in small gloves. That is fighting Thai boxing in small gloves. He is 6-0 in that promotion and on his last fight he claimed the Dracula Fight Night Championship. This this set of rules I believe is made for a monster like this. I mean he can't be an accountant can he with an AK-47 tattooed on the side of his head. <laughs> he doesn't have many career options and one of them that he's excelled in is punching and kicking people in the face. That's what he does exceptionally well. I'm, I'm happy about that. I'm proud of that. Yeah, and, we, and need, I'm glad. we need these people, right? We need Our these job, people. we need these humans. So he, he is a very, very special individual. Polarizing is a great word to describe him. And you can see from the energy that he admits as he walks towards the octagon just how dangerous this man is. And when you look at, and again, we've had the pleasure, the luck, the fortune of calling many cards around the world and meeting many athletes, fighters, there is a difference, right? There are some fighters that are athletes that compete, and there are some guys that are just out and out fighters. This is one of those guys. Yeah, they say you're either a competitor, a fighter, an athlete, or a martial artist. This guy's a fighter. This guy's a fighter. You know, he might be athletic, he might like martial arts, but he's a fighter. His spirit comes from fighting. He wants to cause damage. So, one of the most anticipated fights on the card is set to go on the under set to get underway. Four years the younger is Rushal. Height and reach on the side of Marek Bartel. And in the tip spot odds, Radek Rushel, the favorite. But Bartel looking to upset the hometown crowd. Let's get this underway. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. Ladies and gentlemen, our next contest is a catchweight fight in 71 kilos, and it's underground rules. Three round, three minutes. Let me introduce you both fighters, and we will start in a blue corner. He is 28 years old, and he stands 182 centimeters tall. He weighed in at 70.8 kilos. He represents Octagon Fighting Academy Gym in Bratislava. He has a professional record of 21 fights, 10 wins and 11 losses, and more than 120 fights in stand-up fighting disciplines. Representing Neruda Cup team Singabir and fighting out of the Czech Republic, Marek Bartel! In the red corner, he's 27 years old. He stands 178 centimeters tall and he weighed in at 70.55 kilos. He represents Muay Thai Brno and the coach in this corner is Karel Kaiser. He has a professional record of 27 fights, 20 wins and only 7 losses. Representing Neruda Cup team Tip Sport, fighting out of the Czech Republic and also hometown boy from Brno, Radek Ruchy Roushal. Panové, pravidla tohle stand zápasu znáte. Je to na tři kola po třech minutách, teoreticky možný extranou. Jestli chcete, pojďte si ruce a běžte do svých rohů. They touch gloves. 
We are set and ready. That arena just went alight for the announcement of Radek Rochelle. This is underground rules fighting, so no takedowns. You can't clinch. But when it hits the ground, the referee will stand them back up. Scheduled for three five-minute rounds. Three threes, I believe. It says five on the uh, timer, but I think it's actually three three-minute rounds. Well, we shall wait and see whether the, time, <laughs> the guy got the message with the, uh, the clacker for the end of the round. But nice inside kick there from Rochelle. Rochelle in the red corner, black shots. Way big right hand, hand from Rochelle. Counters very well there. The way he moves, I mean, we talk about him being a fighter, but he has a great skill set, a great understanding of these striking arts. Yeah, and the big difference, which you touched on, you know, a Thai boxer or a K1 fighter coming into the, into MMA or into underground in this in this example is the gloves. It makes a big, big difference on how you throw punches, how you defend punches, your range. Everything is different. And for Rochelle, obviously, big right hand there, nice, finishes with a kick. You know, having that advantage of the experience in those gloves. But look at that right, the, the left eye, sorry, the right hand of Rochelle connected early on, and it's actually caused a cut right on the brow. You can see blood dri dripping from the uh, the left eyebrow of Bartel. Nice straight shots from Bartel, though. Oy. Finishing off with a kick. Bartel looks huge compared to him. This is a 71 kilogram agreed weight class. Oh, yeah. Wait, oh. big right hand lands oh. off the jumping knee. Cheeky left hook as well, though, from Rochelle. Oh, they're both connecting, but now that blood is really pouring on the eye. And wiping away, you see that? Nice oh. cheeky left hook as well. Oh. Both men landing, but definitely Rochelle landing the cleaner shots thus far. Nice little low click there from uh, Bartel. And he's got to use that range, right? You talked about his long weapons. He said those were the keys to his victory as we did the uh, uh, the round zero early on today. At the minute, he's, he's fighting in the range of Rochelle almost. Yeah, definitely. I, I like to see him mix up the punches and kicks together. Normally, Bartel throws long combinations. You know, nice jab left head kicks. I've seen him throw a lot as well. You know, kind of like the Leon Edwards type, one hand, one kick. He throws that very well. But so far, struggling to find his timing, I feel, though, against Rochelle. He's, the movement, like you touched on as well, he's always out the way. And once you start, can't connect, it takes away your rhythm and makes it difficult for you to find timing. Oh, and add to that, that blood is dripping into his eye. You'll see him pour at it a couple of times. And when you talk about blood in the eye on the ground, we talk about in, in mixed martial arts, it causes problems there. Oh, it and back up, but with striking, when you have blood in the eye, it affects your depth perception as well, doesn't it? Because you, you've got a blurred vision. You can see, it's almost like you've got somebody's glasses on on one side and, and a clear shot on the other, so that striking range is almost harder to find as well. Yeah, and also, can just, it's just irritating. Makes you blink, makes you maybe miss something. And you know, I mean, if you miss this millisecond in these fights, the, the speed these guys throw at. An interesting first round, maybe the cut, the biggest putt moment of it. We saw their low kick land, and it yeah. pulled the legs together of Bartel, which made him trip himself up. But it wasn't that much of a devastating shot. But I feel like Radek definitely more dominant in that first and opening round. There we go. Then talk us through some of these exchanges. It was a right hand that caught early. It was the looping right hand of uh, Radek that we see here. We see a nice, a nice right hand there from Bartel on a cheeky left hook. Another nice check hook. I just feel like Radek was getting the cleaner shots through. Both men landing, but again, off the arm there. Nice jab. Everything that Bartel threw, there's the way he trips himself up, coming off the back of that leg. Everything Bartel threw was partially blocked from Radek. Radek got a few clean shots in that opening round. So set and ready for round number two to come on the way. Shut for three rounds. Bartel in the white shorts, blue corner. Radek Rushal. Black shorts, red corner. Me, Brian Lacey, alongside Luke Barnett. And this crowd are loving this. And what's the adjustments now? What are you looking for from Bartel? I feel like he needs to adjust the range. And needs to, if he's going to throw, needs to throw more than one or two shots because Radek moving very well, getting out of the way of one, and then comes back with two or three. 
So he needs to lengthen his combinations in both, in both distance and in quantity. Two, three shots. And they've made the... There he goes, nice right hand, left head kick. That's better, both from length as well. Stiff jab. And they made the adjustment on the clock. They are three minute rounds, two minute 18 left of this one. The second round scheduled for three. Really nice stepping elbow, oh. mixing it up now. And the quantity, there you go, you were talking about it, is increasing that volume. Which he's very, very good at. If you go back and watch his fights, he likes to throw longer combinations. Beautiful work, movement there from Radak to find the center of the cage. And that cut has now started opening up again. That blood on the left side of the face, the left brow of Bartel starts weeping, seeping down his face. Oi. Radek is reading him so well. There's no tells that or feints or cells that Bartel is throwing that Radek is biting on as of yet. Yeah, Bartel's being a bit more deceptive. There was nice jab left in side kick. He can take that up to the head as well. Really oh, big right hand lands. Oh, yes. That winging kind of off angle right hand as well. It's not a straight right, it's not an overhand. It's almost just a right hook. Oh. Nice outside. Left hook, outside kick. You get that, you see those finishes with those Muay Thai combinations, burying that shin into that sciatic nerve. Oof. Well, that's the traditional way to, to, to throw strikes. Left to right, right to left. You, you talk your body, so you talk it to wind it up and then throw the other side. Now we see the more advanced left, left, right, right. They're more surprising, don't have so much power on them. But when you throw from left to right, it possesses real devastating, devastating power. And we're seeing it uh, pretty much at a very orthodox Thai boxing match between the two, even the way you've seen Bartel walk forward and step, allowing shot for shot with each other. And he's, he's got to be careful with that as well, because the world, the, the whole career of Rochel has been in Thai boxing. Yeah, and Rochelle, you just see the movement is a little bit better. Oh, the finishes with that low kick as well. The bite and the snap and the torque on those kicks. Inside, outside kicks coming from Rochelle. Now Bartel calling him in the middle. Let's stand toe to toe, let's go. Because that's what Bartel needs, and that's what he wants. He can't handle the movement of Radek. Radek is in and out, moves laterally very, very well. Bartel throws, and he throws well, but he throws in a static position. He needs to throw combinations that, that gel into movement. So right hand, okay, right hand, left kick, but step forward with it. Don't just throw right hand, left kick in place. He needs more movement off the combinations because Radek's very hard to find and disappearing very well. So we'll have a little look back at some of the action from that round. And it feels like Radek is having the last word in the exchanges as well, Luke. Yeah, maybe the last word, but also here was a beautiful movement. And again, he's out the way, so he's making his man miss, you know, which makes him look desperate. And then, you see again, made him miss, made him miss, made him miss. Caught with a little bit of a kick at the end. So it's difficult for Bartel to find Radek. And again, you see jumping knee, but doesn't land. And then has the final say. And Radek Rochelle, we have seen him in the Octagon cage before. But most of his recent career has been in DFN, and that is a ring loop. And the ring is much smaller in this cage. And what I'm liking from Radek Rochelle is his use of the space, right? He is aware where that open water is, and he's using it to his advantage. Exactly that. He's, that that's what's winning him this fight, in my opinion, so far, is that movement and that evasive tactic of getting out of the way. And look at the condition he's in as well, how fresh is this? If you were to switch this on and just look at Radek with that movement, the bite, the snap, you could say this is Ram. Oh, you see his knee buckle a little bit there when he stepped back. He slipped off of that push kick, push kick, got sweat, I think, off of Bartel on the bottom of his foot, and then slipped as he put his foot back down. But yeah, these both look very fresh coming into this third round here. And would you say, in your opinion, and I'm not sticking you in that judge's corner, but Bartel need a finish? I feel that, that definitely, in my opinion, he's stalking now, walking his man down, looking to make something happen. But he's a lot more active and a lot more now varying up the tempo of his shots, not throwing everything into the shot, which I think is clever. Because, because Radek's moving so well, he could go little, 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 big, boom, you know? So like, tuk, 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 boom, rather than it starting with a big shot. 
That means the big shots will find Radak. Just under two minutes. Oh, a nice right hand lands from Radak and oh. knee as well. Oh, step with the knee and the right hand at the same time there. A little bit of frustration for the first time on the face of Bartel. You saw it there as he ate another shot. Beautiful low kick there, though. Oh, and again, throwing different tempos, different rhythms. I like that. That last, last right hand was tough. Opening shots were quite soft. Maybe that's fatigue. Maybe it's a... Oh! Sits him down with the right hand. Sits him down. Shot. And we get a 10 count for Bartel. Eight count, it should be. Referee checks him. He says he's good to go. Let's see if Radha Rochelle looks for the finish. What a statement this would be. One minute, one minute to do it. Oh, looking for the clinch there in Still on only. wobbly legs. It's Bartel. Oh, a nice awareness from Rochelle. Steps out of range again and then steps back in and fires a combo. Yeah, he needs to be careful he doesn't get too hungry here. Head hunting, because if he stands still, Bartel's still dangerous, but Radak here taking over. It has been a really impressive performance from start to finish from Radak Rochelle, and it's made more impressive with the quality of the opponent, Bartel. And right now, in the ascendancy is Rochelle 10, sorry, 15 seconds to go. Yeah, two big shots landed there as well. For Radak, last 10 seconds. Oh, this has been a battle of two warriors. <laughs> Rochelle standing there, rising through. He's already pointing at Andre Novotny. Already pointing the smiles on his face. But Bartel, what a warrior as well, Luke. Was willing to go out on his shield, willing to put it all on in front of these crowds, this, these fans. Yeah, both these men are really the epitome of what a fire is and what they should be. They come in here and put it all on the line every time. None of these guys are going to back down. You know they're not going to give up. They're going to come in and put on a show for the fans. Doesn't matter how much it hurts, how much pain they have to walk through. They're looking to finish the fight. Great three-round war between these two men. A war indeed. An elated corner there, Rochelle. We still have to find out the judges' scores. This has gone to them. But I feel like it was just a movement. Those right knees were very, very effective as well. But the, there's that right hand that lands off that left hook. We saw that quite a few times in the fight. Left hand, right hand lands again. Sits him down. Forces an eight count. And it just, his vocabulary of weapons was phenomenal. You look at the numbers here, they do not lie. 63 to 35 significant punches, all punches, 67 to 35. Accuracy, Luke, accuracy was key as well. Yeah, I feel like the movement was the difference. The movement from Radek, the speed, just, just how he was in and out, a nice lateral movement as well. Yeah, I mean, he's celebrating already. I feel like he's certain he's got this one in the bag. I'd have to agree, but there's only one man that can make it official. I think that guy's going straight to the after party, though. Look at those moves. Let's get it announced. Let's get the final scores. Let's hand it to Andre Novotny. All three judges scored this fight in the favor of the winner, 30-25, 30-26, and 30-25. And the winner coming from the red corner, Radek Ruchi Rochal. Rochal takes the victory here against Marek Bartel. We will hear from Rochal, and we will get that translated for you. Excited to hear what he has to say. Uh, první otázka, jak je to pocit před vyprodanou arenou tady v Brně předvést takovýhle výkon a jedním úderem dokonce i posadit Marka Bartla na zadek. Tak Marek je kvalitní soupeř, jsem rád, že jsme povedli, jestli jsem zápasil, když to bylo býváku kolem 500 diváků. Teď tady prodaná winning group arena, ty je moc děkuju. Bruno, se tady, se s náma, A ještě bych chtěl říct, tento zápas byl věnovaný 
před měsícem přesně a jeden den mi umřel můj nejlepší kamarád, měl uh, na motorce se vyvoural, ty to, to je pro tebe vy to, mám tě strašně moc rád. Fantastický výkon, Marek nastoupil velmi dobře, tvrdě kopal v tom prvním kole, ale postupně se mi zdálo, že si byl rychlejší a taky přesnější. Ne, jak jsem říkal, já jsem trénoval, jsem tomu všechno, žádná party, jenom trénink, tr... zaskočil mě teda, rozkopal mě ruce, jsem rozkopaný do bytej, ale ještě jsem to víc. Děkuji Marku, jak kvalitní soupeř, děkuji mému týmu, už jsme si to a víc takových zápasů. Děkuji, doufám, že se vidíme naposledy. Podíbilo se vám to? Pojďte za žvěte. Děkujeme moc, fantastický výkon, Radek Ruchy Roušal. So Marek, um, congratulations for a win. Marku, so how does it feel to yeah, make such a great um, fight in front of the whole Bruno Arena? How was it like? Well, I want you a lot to be here in the Bruno Arena. I thank you too. And I thank to my opponent, Marek Bartl. Uh, to be honest, he impressed me a little bit because he was kicking hard, but I was able to overcome it. And uh, actually, I would like to have a message here. A friend of mine died a month ago uh, in an accident. And my friend, I love you, it's for you. So now we hear from Marek Bartal. What a warrior took it to Radak Rochelle. I'm speaking with the one and only Andre Novotny right now. Máme to domluvené, tak chci se rovnou zeptat. Můžeme to teď prozradit. Máme, máme domluvený zápas. Bude to OK? So we will translate this for you as well. We will hear from Matos R. Translator, we will break it down. We've heard from Radak Rochelle after this victory. Great respect to this guy, Marek Bartel, as well. Okay, thank you very much. Marek Bartel, fantastic win. So now we will hear what Marek Bartel had to say after that. So I... I think my opponent is a bony, very, he's a bony opponent. I don't actually like him, to be honest. He's pushing a lot, he has great pressure. And I haven't been in many years, just fully standing up. There was no one willing to be standing up with me in the octagon, so I'm grateful for my opponent to give me this chance. I thank you. I don't regret anything, no pity, and I'm looking forward to the next fights. We're bringing the world's finest entertainment to Germany. With the very first tournament, we managed to sell out the iconic Festhal and break the German MMA records. And now, it's time to move on. This time, you can look forward to German superstar and former pro footballer Christian Eckelin. For the second time this year, he is going to face the dangerous Brazilian striker, Di Oliveira. A rematch that will settle all scores and give both fighters the chance to show who is better. Will once again perform in front of his home crowd now as the winner of the battle for Germany. In front of all Frankfurt, the Czech crowd favorite, Milos Petrasek, will try and rob him of the victory. Petrasek takes him down immediately. How will the battle between the best German fighter and multiple time world champion against the elite Czech fighter turn out? Milos Petrasek! The story and the mission continue. Octagon 36, October 15th, Frankfurt. Tickets available for purchase through Ticketmaster DE.